Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we learned all about saving, loading and deleting in the context of the desktop workflow. For the last few videos of this series, we'll focus more on the media panel, workspace library and collaboration. If you've been using a much older version of Flame Premium or even Smoke Advanced, this will change the way you approach project management and media handling. Starting off with the media panel, you can see the entire project structure whether you're working in the current desktop or libraries. Organizing media, moving media or elements between workspace sections, controlling the real visibility as well as managing batch groups all form the premise that the media panel is built with organization in mind. You've already seen examples of this throughout the series. In terms of working with the media panel, you have a few different views. You have the regular view that is located to the side of the main interface. Or you can have a single full screen view. Use the menus or press SHIFT tilde to expand the media panel. In addition to this, you can toggle between the Tiles view and the List view using the View Mode box. This expanded view shows all the available component information in the media panel. In fact, this is the recommended way to browse and manage content in the libraries. Now this may look like a previous version of Flame Premium, where you would go into a clip library and do media management. However, you are actually not diving into a library database of any sort. You are simply being presented with a view of the media to efficiently perform media management. So let's have a closer look. In terms of basic organization, you can manually arrange your content. Or you can sort the content by any of the columns in ascending or descending properties. By clicking on the column header, you will cycle through ascending, descending or manual sorting. You can also use the contextual menu to choose the sorting and what columns are displayed in the list view. And as you have already experienced, to get a more visual view of your media in any part of the media panel, you can switch to the tiles view. This is a more effective way to visually identify any media. All the tiles can be scrubbed and you can increase or decrease the tile size by adjusting the slider. What's really handy is that the regular view of the media panel has a separate tile size compared to the expanded view. This means you can adjust the tile sizes for both views and toggle easily between them. All operational functionality is the same whether you use the list view or the tiles view. You can grab clips or folders and drag them directly into the reels group or batch group. An important point to mention is that in any creative area, the media panel will reflect what is in the desktop. The media is simply being represented in different ways. For example, the tiles in the media panel match up with their corresponding clips in the desktop reels. And if you switch to batch or work in batch effects, the tiles and list views are still available. In this scenario, the tiles view is more useful because it eliminates the need for the desktop reels view to visually identify compositing elements. I'll return to the full screen view of the media panel. Now I would like to show you some finer details that might not be apparent, but it will allow you to know exactly where you are in the media panel. Let's take the tiles view into account, as well as the sheer volume of elements you could have in the workspace. This could lead to a massive list of entries that you need to navigate. So to help you keep track of your location in the media panel, you have dynamic folder accumulation. In other words, as you scroll the media panel, the libraries, folders, reels, etc. will gather at the top of the media panel. For example, if you had a reel containing hundreds of clips, you can keep scrolling the media panel and you will always see the current library folder and reel that you are browsing. As you move on to the next library, folder or reel, this will continue to gather at the top of the media panel. You can click on the arrow symbol of any of these levels and this will jump you back to that level within the workspace structure. I can't express enough how useful this is to manage very populated libraries. 
Another useful view that is more appropriate for media management is the dual panel view. Now you have the same two views of the same media panel but they are independent of each other. You can look at different sections of the workspace at the same time. Each media panel also has its own set of filtering tabs at the top. So moving elements between the libraries or between the desktop and libraries is much easier in this view. You can resize the media panels using the split bar. And you can change between tiles and list view in each of the panels. Please note that only a side-by-side -side configuration of the media panel is supported in dual view. And finally, I'd like you to think about the different ways in which you can represent media in conjunction with the media panel. For example, you can enable the timeline view underneath the media panel. So you can visualize your selected clip as a tile or a selection in a list. But you can also visualize it as a timeline at the same time. This might not be optimal for editing tasks, but it could be useful for editorial reviews and more. A big point I'd like to reiterate is that all of this functionality is available everywhere in the Flame products. So for example, let's switch to the Media Hub. Using the Project tab, you should have the same experience browsing projects. You're able to view all the workspaces within a project. Going into a project, you can use the Tiles or List view. Now ensure you toggle to a hierarchy view instead of a single view. When you browse the folders, they will dynamically accumulate the workspace structure at the top of the panel. Double-clicking on Libraries, Folders or Reels will isolate that section in the browser for a more focused view of the elements. You can track your location using the breadcrumb hints above the browsing window. Clicking on any of these points will reintroduce the higher levels of the workspace structure. So you can easily focus on a single folder or jump back to the entire workspace structure with a click. Another example of the media panel functionality is considering the task of conforming. By using the Conform tab at the top of the media panel, you can filter by conform sources. Using this in combination with tiles, you can clearly see the shots associated with the conform. Hopefully problem solving for any conforms will be easier from a visual standpoint. And to conclude this video, as a reminder you don't need to see the media panel all the time for creative tasks. You can simply hold CONTROL and swipe it away. The same action will bring it back when you need it. Please note that the Flame products do support a dual screen configuration that will give you even more space to view the media panel. Please refer to the hardware specifications and documentation to use this functionality. So let's summarize what has been covered in this video. The media panel plays a major role in managing your entire project as well as tying all the different core areas of Flame Premium together. By using these concepts, you should always know where you are in the workspace structure. And with these concepts available everywhere in Flame Premium, you should be able to work faster and more efficiently. Coming next, we focus solely on the library section of the workspace. This includes media management within the overall desktop workflow. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.